Welcome to this conversation. In this conversation, I'm going to talk about the moon's placement in Aries. Now, as is usually my process, when a functional light like the moon finds itself in Aries, then it is down to Aries to replicate the behavioral prescription indicated by that functional light itself, which in this case is the moon. Now, as such, it's always an issue of compatibility because the moon represents a behavioral prescription and it depends on how well this behavioral prescription can be found within the sign of Aries, which is a general behavioral archetype. Now, how well this behavioral archetype can replicate the prescription indicated by the moon is what the interpretation of the moon in Aries is all about. And so for that, we need to understand what this uh, archetype really is. That is the Aries archetype. And then what the behavioral prescription of the moon is. And then match the two together to see how it really measures up. Now, astrologically speaking, there are no good or bad placements. These are uh, fossils, you know, residuals from an age long gone where people didn't understand the fact that astrology is a description of complex dynamics. Okay, and in complex dynamics, it's the overall output that is measured. It's not a question of whether there are any good or bad placements, because what exactly would that mean? Okay, all ingredients come together to make the right dish. Okay, some ingredients are needed in very tiny quantities. Some ingredients are needed in large quantities. Some ingredients have a taste that is literally opposite the taste of other ingredients. But it's the balance and the, the mixture of everything that makes the final uh, dish taste so good. So there are really no good or bad placements, etc. Okay. Now, the moon represents an internalization process because it represents the sign of cancer. All right. Now, the sign of cancer is an in internalization process, meaning it's a process that gathers things together from all over the place and then incubates them in a figurative womb, so to speak. And now, what is being incubated in that womb is a process of knowing, a kind of knowledge process. But this time, the knowing process is directed at the self. So that what is really going on there is that the self is coming to know itself to a point where it can now accept itself. That process of self-acceptance is the final delivery for the sign of cancer and for the moon. That's what it's really concerned with because self-acceptance encompasses the safety concerns that the moon really has and it encompasses the acceptance of those safety conditions. And so it prescribes how these safety requirements are met and where they are being sought. So where you find the moon is where these safety concerns are being sought. And that means that that is where this self-acceptance is being sought. Aries is an outgoing function. It is prescribed by the emanation of what I call a first principle. It really is concerned with brand new changes of state. So that when a system transforms qualitatively into a different type of ex experience, that is an Arian function. So Aries is always concerned with the transformation of these realities in terms of the introduction into new realities. And that is why the zero degrees of Aries is the natural ascendant. Because it is an entry into this physical world, this world where things are very different qualitatively than the world in the womb where formation was taking place. All right. And what typifies the Aries function when it describes a new type of awareness born into a new type of reality? It is typified by heightened awareness. Because you can imagine that a child that spends nine months in the womb and then they're born at the zero degrees of Aries or the ascendant, so to speak, that child is suddenly hit with new types of things that they haven't experienced before. They begin the process of self-definition. And self-definition, the process always begins with self-identification. And so Aries is always concerned with, who am I? That is the predominant question in the mind of the Arian. Who or what am I? I need to have a name. I need to have an identity. I need to be called something. And the way that the Arian function chases this is it tries to open new doors, new realities. Because what it intuits is very simple. It intuits that it can catch a glimpse of what it really is through a new experience. And so it seeks out these new experiences as a way of trying to re-energize the birthing process. So Aries wants to be born again and again and again 
and again because what it's really looking for is that zero degrees of ascendant it wants to feel all of that all over again just to catch a glimpse of what it is because the birthing process is a, like a literally a miracle in the mind of aries all of a sudden wow you are thrust into a new reality system that you have no idea what it is you have no idea what you are all right and so it's a process where you can start afresh, so to speak. And that is what typifies the Aryan function. It is this sudden thrust into a new type of world where you now begin the process of self-identification. So it's essentially the same thing as being born again. All right. Now, the moon in Aries is like being born again with water. And water in this case now signifies the emotions. And it signifies the emotional wrapping around of this internalization process, this need for sensitivity and emotional safety, which is now being sought in Aries. Now, that already is a mismatch because the internalization process is a more advanced process than the Aryan function can really handle. Aries only has one concern. It wants to live again and again and again. It wants to be born again and again and again. So it wants to emerge into new realities again and again and again. And the way that it defines that emergence or re-emergence is by being first in everything. It really is a drive for supremacy. And so the sign of Aries is very combative, not because it wants to be. That is the only way that it can re-address this process of birth again and again and again. So when the moon finds itself in Aries, that moon begins to experience what this Aryan function is. The need to be born again and again and again. The need for primacy. The need to be first. It now becomes an emotional sensitivity. And so the individual is now compelled to act according to that Aryan function in a very instinctual manner. And that means that the individual becomes very combative. They become very drawn to processes of rebirth in terms of, it's not the rebirth as indicated by Scorpio, which is a long drawn out process. This is a very quick process that happens very suddenly because that's the nature of Mars. It's not a transformation per se as it is an emergence into a new type of reality. So think about rooms, different types of rooms. Okay, Aries is the function that goes into one room, spends two seconds there, doesn't like what it sees. It goes into another room, spends two seconds there, goes into, and it keeps changing these rooms. Now, what is it looking for? It's not really looking for anything in particular. It wants to catch a glimpse of what it is like to experience something new for the very first time. Because what it is looking for is the original birthing process. The original birthing function. Because when Aries rises on your ascendant, you are born with a specific type of joy. The joy that comes from just being alive. You are happy to be here. And so Aries carries that initial happiness. That initial joy that comes from just being. The joy that comes from living. And so the rebirthing process, the need to experience rebirth over and over and over again, it's not the rebirth indicated by Scorpio. I really need to make this very clear. It's a rebirthing process that is the same thing as being delivered through the birth canal of the mother. That is the first thing that the alien felt when they experienced the new reality of the physical realm. Is there's, there's a certain type of happiness that came over them. That happiness and that joy is what they want to experience over and over and over again. So they do not have the time to form the intricate and delicate and deep connections that are required from the internalization processes of the moon. And so the moon experiences this shallowness of being reborn over and over again before it has the time to construct roots and foundations that are typical of the moon's lunar placement in the natal chart. And so the result is a dynamic mismatch and process that chases this internalization but before it can sink the roots, Aries changes and switches up the whole game. And so the individual is unsettled by nature. Now, from the external perspective, you watching this will say, oh my goodness, this person doesn't have a patience to settle down into any rhythm. But that's where you're wrong. That is their rhythm. Now, nobody else can maintain that level of dissonance and, and pace if your moon is not in Aries. You wear yourself out with exhaustion, but not these people. If they slow down, it appears as if they will self-combust. It appears as if they will die and drop dead once they slow down. They cannot. They are constantly chasing that Aryan function over and over again. They want to experience it. And as a result of that, they are constantly chasing the sexual function.
Because Aries is the energy of sex. It is sex that leads to birth. The birth of a human child, that is. And so when the moon finds itself in Aries, it is constantly chasing that birthing process. And its way of doing this unconsciously and instinctively is through the sexual act. So Aries wants to have sex over and over and over again. And the moon in Aries makes this process an instinctual unconscious process. And so what you have is your proverbial jackrabbit. Can't stop. Won't stop. All right. All the sexual experiences are not deep. They're largely superficial because they don't stick around to form those permanent bonds. They're gone the very next minute. All right. Because the moon depends on patterning behavior. The moon is a predictable cycle of change. That's why the moon changes its uh, nature, its behavior in the sky. So it's change, but it's very predictable. Now, Aries doesn't like that predictability. It doesn't want to grow up. It wants to remain in that constant permanent state of joy that comes from the initial birthing process. And this is what it chases. This is the way that you behave wherever you have Aries in your natal chart. You're not ready to sink roots there. You're not ready to evolve there. You are ready to stay in a permanent state of what? Joy. The joy of just being. You don't want to do anything else there but experience the freshness and the newness of that reality. And that is where you cultivate that newness. So if you have the Aryan function in a place where you should be sinking roots, you have a mismatch there. But usually these mismatches in astrology, right? They are used to generate dynamism for other areas in the natal chart. They're not sitting by themselves there. They're used to generate movement, energy, so as to power other aspects of the natal chart. So that this needs to constantly renew the ref or refresh the experience. Refreshment is a better word than renewal. This need of Aries to constantly refresh the experience of life, right? Now serves as an inducement for other areas of the natal chart. Usually the way things are coded in the natal chart is that your life is divided into two sections. Your internal experience of yourself and the external experience that you that you consider to be an external reality, which is just a projection of yourself. The problems are usually coded in the internal reality most of the time. So that by dealing with those internal problems, you end up sculpting an external experience. Unknown to you when you start, that is, because you don't know that you're doing that. Okay? And sometimes in those very rare cases, you have problems coded externally. Right, so that the external environment appears as some type of constraining, limiting, or oppressive force, which now incubates within the individual the need to develop the character to match that external environment because the character is needed on a local level. So, there are many ways these things are coded within the natal chart, but each one is designed to bring out the very best in the performance of the individual. But most of the time, we lose track of what this best performance should be because our reality is saturated with narratives that destroy cognition. Those narratives are falsehoods. Now, when we internalize those falsehoods, they disrupt the normal flow of personality development within the individual and they create problems that cannot really be resolved because the sculpting mechanisms that those narratives contain, they're literally designed to create dysfunction. And dysfunction does not lead to any type of development. It is dysfunction that ultimately leads to death. Now, you would ask, why would people create these dysfunctional narratives? Well, it's simple. If you are on your knees, you cannot stand up and then you can remain a slave because you never really understand what is going on within yourself and you never really understand what is going on in your external environment and in that way people can wield power over you because you have no idea what is going on okay and that is why psychodynamics and natal chart synthesis are invaluable tools in the delineation of personality because they're not really it's not really personality that you're understanding what you are coming to grips with is freedom what it truly means to be free because now you know what's going on you now have a clue, a very good idea of what is going on inside of you and how that inside of you is generating a reality. Okay? That is what it means to be free. And as we begin the journey into Aquarius for the next 2,200 years, that concept of freedom will become front and center in human nature. Because what it means to be free is to be free from dogma. 
to be free from these dysfunctional narratives. All right. And that's what it means to stand up. That's why Aquarius is signified by a human being. It's not a thing or an animal, or, you know, it's a human, a human with knowledge. That knowledge is self-awareness, the knowledge of self. It has nothing to do with religion because religion is one of the dysfunctionalities that creates the dysfunction within a human being. Because you have no idea what is going on. You see people spouting all sorts of nonsense. They talk about angels and demons as if these things exist. Imagine believing in such things and you have never seen one. Now, those who have listened to me in the past, in some of my past podcasts, where I talked about angels being very specific thought patterns and thought forms, they're very different from your normal everyday type of thinking. And once such a thought pattern appears in your head, you will know. It's very different. It's very powerful. It has nothing to do with all the, you know, imagery that they put out there. They draw angels with wings because wings represent air. Air represents mental thought patterns. That's really what it is. And demons simply represent the opposite of that in terms of evil thought patterns. People run around talking about angels and demons as if these things are mythical animals or mythical beings or some supernatural beings, but they've never seen anything like this. The, the, the reality of such a thing does not appear anywhere in their consciousness, and yet they hold on to it. You have no experience of any of these things, and yet you believe you, your consciousness holds on to them in very detrimental ways. Because then you don't know what is real anymore. You are told to believe these things. Do you see how damaging that can be? You have never seen one. Your experience doesn't contain anything beyond what someone else has represented. And yet you hold on to those things as if they are more real than your own physical existence. That creates a type of insanity in the brain. Where you can no longer understand what is true and what is false. That's really what it is. Now back to the moon in Aries placement in terms of the need, the instinctual need to refresh reality over and over again and that means that the moon in aries personality comes across as very impetuous very impulsive very competitive and always ready for action because that action that need for action really is the need to refresh reality and what the antagonism is in this combination is the predictability of reality because that predictability makes the individual think about the sinking of roots and the internalization of the experience. And because of this, the moon in Aries personality is traumatized. It's a natural trauma situation because they do not want to internalize that experience. And so they come across as ready and ever willing to continue the movement, the movement toward the dynamic entity that is Aries. Now, Aries is a personality archetype that isn't evolved at all. Like I said, it is only concerned with the desire to be, the joy that comes from being. Now, in order to be able to replicate what the moon is, the behavioral prescription that the moon is, it means that Aries must evolve. And he doesn't want to do that because to do that is to leave the comfort zone that Aries represents, which is the constant state of renewed joy. Now, the moon in Aries forces a development of some kind, okay? And that means that Aries begins to evolve. It begins to feel the pressure to grow up. And so it rebels against this, really. The energy that it puts out is the energy of trying to move away from this need to grow up. And so it, it engages in combat against any type of reality that forces it to take what? To take responsibility for its actions, because that's what it means to grow up. And it doesn't want to do that. It wants to be able to do as it pleases. And it is very easy for this type of mentality to run into problems and trouble in the world. Because you cannot just keep doing whatever you like without consequence. Usually the consequences stack up. But the alien personality is long gone before the uh, you know anyone can begin to point fingers. And so they have this reputation of being able to act without tact. Being able to act so insensitively. Now, it's not that the moon in Aries personality does not know that there is some need for sensitivity. They feel the sensitivity. It is that sensitivity that makes them act the way that they do. Because the sensitivity wants to force them to plant roots. And planting roots means coming to a halt. It means settling down. And these people do not want to do that. Because when they settle down, it means they now need to grow up and take responsibility. And they have no need 
for that. They that's like very far away from their world view. Okay, so these people have a, a reputation for not being able to cement relationships. That is to build the necessary level of trust needed to plant roots. That is, the tendency is always to superficial arrangements. That is, arrangements that can be broken, you know, within a moment's notice, so to speak. And that's where they find their comfort. That's where their emotional safety comes from. It comes from being able to act because what they're really after is that need to refresh reality. Because that is the only way that in their minds they can do what? They can pursue their need for supremacy. The need to be first, the need to be a pioneer, the need to be enterprising in such a way that they are the first people to open up any vista. That is so important for them, the need for primacy. Because within Aries, the ego is exalted. And the exaltation simply means that it is not aware of anything else. It has the ability to close up its reality to everything else and only center its own individuated action. And so all the goodness that it derives and all the difficulties that come into its existence that's where it comes from this need to center experience around itself only and around its action because what it sees as its trajectory is what the protection of its own self by acting first that is the development of the need for supremacy as a means of refreshing reality so as to always be on top this is the moon in aries worldview and if you find this type of uh, placement within your natal chart it is engineered in such a way as to generate this dynamism because it is necessary in another part of the natal chart, like I've said earlier. And most people may not realize that the moon in Aries also is a pressure to grow up very quickly, a pressure to skip the entirety of the developmental process and to just reach for the prize. Well, as is normal, such things contain errors because, you see, the moon in Aries personality does not know how to assess the quality of what they have done. They do not know what the nature of correction really is. And that is one of the things that they are learning about here, in this reality, with this placement. Because they are through the door before they have a chance to actually contemplate what the end result is going to be. And there is nobody who behaves that way that isn't guessing. They're guessing about reality because Aries has not developed sufficiently well to internalize the nature of what? Consequence. So they're guessing. They simply have no way of understanding the relationship between cause and effect. So they often look at the reactions of others to gauge what the manner of their action has been. Okay? And when people react sensitively or irritably towards what they have done, as in how can you be so insensitive? How can you be so irresponsible? How can you be so reckless? Then they cannot take this. They push back with aggression. But in their quiet moment, they reflect upon this, and this bothers them a lot. Now, it's not the fact that someone else's emotions has been hurt that bothers them. It's the fact that they can't tell when they are hurting someone else. And that's what bothers them the most. Because if they can't tell, then it increases their chances of error. Error rates decrease their ability to be first. Because they end up making mistakes, and they do not want to do that. They want to be premiers. They want to be the first through the door. They want to be the one holding the trophy at the end of the day. So the need for this settled matter, this matter of who is the best, who is the first, who is the strongest, who is the supreme, the need to settle that matter is what Aries sees as a disturbance when others interject into its reality. It's, it wonders, but wait a second, why are you guys competing against me? Everybody knows I'm the best. Everybody knows I'm the, the supreme one here. Why are you guys even bothering to compete against me? What's the rivalry for? And the moon in Aries actually gets very angry that it faces competition. It has a sensitivity in that competitiveness because anyone actually dares to compete against them. And this is where its hurt comes from. And it can react in ways that are very tempestuous. You know, it can react with so much rage. And because of this wonders, and why would anybody even dare to compete with me? What, what's there? Isn't it obvious that I'm the best at whatever category it is that is being examined? All right. So there's a sensitivity that accompanies the moon in Aries. A sensitivity that is masked by the fact that it's always very aggressive, always very assertive, and always ready to compete. 